Welcome back for episode 4 of the Honda CBR 954RR. This time around, let's get deep into it and let's do a valve adjustment. But now for the chit chat, let's get on it. I already moved aside the coil and the wires got everything in the way out of the way and it's time to remove the cover which is 410 millimeter bolts so let's begin now remove the timing inspection cap All the inside seems to be in excellent shape. I'm uh, incredibly surprised and relieved. Now, I've purposefully not done an oil change yet, just in case anything falls in there. It's time to remove uh, the cap of the chain tensioner. It's an eight millimeters. Let's see what I can do. Remember not to lose the washer. Very important. Honda requires a special tool to stuck into the tensioner and rotate clockwise and then lock. I don't have a special tool. What I have, it's a broken <laughs> little screwdriver that I jam in there with another screwdriver for leverage. If you have the tool, great. If you want to try to make yourself the tool for it, the Haynes manual inside Actually, it gives you the dimensions and the size and the shape of the special tool. Before we start measuring and making calculation, there are a few fundamentals that you need to know to actually be able to do this job. First of all, looking at the engine down as if you are riding, start from the left side to the right hand side. And the left side is cylinder number one you have four cylinders, obviously, one per spark plug, and they're right by the spark plug. So one, two, three, and four. You have intake and exhaust. The intake is the, the side towards you, while the exhaust is in the front. Each intake and exhaust has two lobes. If you're following along on a manual, like the Ains manual, and they tell you to check the intake side on cylinder number one and number three, you know they're talking about this one and this one because it's on the intake side, number one piston and number three piston. You gotta check two of them and make note of both of them. Another thing you need to understand when you have your tool and you're trying to figure out uh, what works and what doesn't, this is supposed to go in between the lobe and the cover for the valve itself. When finally you have your tool ready and you're measuring the cam, the distance between the cam and the base down there, remember this. It doesn't have to just slide in with no resistance like it's happening right now on this one, but it needs to go in and kind of stick a little bit. The only other thing you need to know is that on the right hand side, always looking forward, there are two sprocket looking things. Those sprocket looking things <laughs> are attached to the camshaft and those are the ones that move, rotate the cams around. Now on those there is etched IN for intake and EX for exhaust. According to the manual, you need to make the intake or the exhaust line line up with the crankcase. It's kind of hard to see because of the frame on the CBR, but it's important that you know that before you do the job. Otherwise, you're checking the wrong specs with the valve in the wrong position. 
Now that you know all this, we can go on, move the crank and take the piston to the appropriate position for us to take the measurements. Before you start taking everything apart uh, over here to change the shims, make sure you turn the crankshaft until the T mark is back where it's supposed to be. Not the T itself, the line next to it, the mark over there. So align the mark with this one over here. And piston number one is at top dead center on the compression stroke. How do you know that is at top dead center on the compression stroke? You look at the lobes on number one and they need to point outward. If they point outward, that means the valves are all closed and obviously the piston is compressing. So realign the T mark down there and it's time to remove the cam chain guide over here. It's uh, 10 millimeters and let's take it off. Once you remove it, put a wire around the chain so that it doesn't fall inside the engine case. And I'm gonna wire it very loosely over here. And now it's time to remove the camshaft holder bolts. Uh, since I have to pretty much change all of them, I'm gonna remove all of them from the outside to the inside in a crisscross pattern. So let's start with this one. At this point, try to remove uh, the holder all together, keeping the, the bolts in it so you know where they come from. And put this aside. At this point, I'm gonna pull uh, the camshaft, uh, not completely out. I'm gonna just lift it out of the way and pick up the, the little cups with uh, the shim uh, underneath. And then I'm gonna replace it one by one, trying not to move the camshaft too much so that I don't have to deal with that later on when I put it back together. Always double check the thickness of your shims because this one is supposed to be a 170. Instead, it's a 167. You're double checking not because the outcomes measurements are wrong, because I'm pretty sure if you grab a micrometer, the outcomes come in at 170 or 175 as they say on them. The problem is you are measuring the one on your bike with your own caliper. And maybe your own caliper is off by 0 0.03 of, of a millimeter, which is absolutely nothing but because you're taking the base measurement with your own caliber you need to re-measure 
the shims so that the same error applies to both shims and when you do the correction, the correction is actually correct. What I'm trying to do here is give you the basics so that if you're going to do a valve check and a shim replacement on any other bike, the fundamentals are always the same. The procedure is always the same. And hopefully after you watch my video, you'll be able to do this procedure on whatever bike you get, unless it's a Ducati with a Desmo and then uh, your SOL. So always remember to use assembly lube. Every time you put any mechanical part inside your engine back together, assembly lube, be generous with it. Once you've changed all the shims, it's time to put the camshaft holders back on it. Tie them by hand and then with a regular uh, wrench in a start pattern, start tying it up all the way until they close uh, uh, to, the, to the engine itself. Once it's hard to turn it by hand and it's time to torque it down, the maintenance manual says to torque them at 12 newton meters. Please double check those numbers. I'm not responsible for it. I'm just saying what the manual that I have says, please double check those numbers and then torque the holders in a star pattern. And at this point also you can remove the piece of wire that you tied around the chain. Once you tied all of them, go back to the crankshaft and rotate the crankshaft three or four times. Let it rotate, let it move so that those uh, shims settle down properly and then start again with checking the valve clearance in the same pattern as we did uh, to check it before replacing the shims. The last thing left to do is to put the cover, the valve cover, back on. There is no need to add RTV to this. I obviously cleaned it, made sure that there are no dents, no uh, weird stuff going on. So off we go, nice and easy. Here we go. There are some foamy bits on either side of the of the frame. Push them back because otherwise they're gonna get in the way or they're gonna get stuck in there. We don't want that. Time to put the bolts back on. Just like everything else, even the valve cap needs to be torqued properly. If you have a manual, great. If you don't, uh, look through the internet. If, you're, uh, if you are a patron, look through the files attached to the video on the patron page. They're gonna be there. All right, all done at this point. There are a few house cleaning items to do one more time. So this hose needs to go through here because it goes down to the, to the radiator. Time to cut this zip tie that I put up here so we can release the harness and we can put it back in place on the side of the engine. There are a few other things to move around. Let's see, those are the injectors. And those are the coils. Obviously the coils need to be brought back up front. This one is the radiator fan, so by the way, remember to label every plug because if you have the same head I do, you'll forget stuff. So radiator fan, it goes down here. And we are all set. That is finally it when it comes to the valve clearance check and reshimming. Now, from next episode on, we're going to start putting stuff back, replacing the spark plug, putting the throttle body back on, and on and on and on. And hopefully soon enough, putting the gas tank back on and try to see if uh, the, the engine actually starts. As always, for everything I used in this video, check the description down below. If uh, you want to get deep into the rebuild, go and become a patron and 
Thank you very much to my patrons. You guys are the best for helping. New perks for you guys. I just realized it because sometimes I'm a knucklehead. Every time I'm gonna publish a maintenance video, there are gonna be files to help you with the torque specs, with the procedure itself on the Patreon page so that you guys can actually go in and check it out. For uh, the rest of you out there, I hope uh, you guys liked the video. If you did, do the usual things that uh, are done on YouTube and uh, nothing. Work on your bike and I'll see you next time.